want to welcome everybody to our little Bible study, and um, I'm going to tell you all about this little hose that I have in my hand in a little while. So um, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father God, uh, we thank you that we are accepted in your beloved Son, and we are complete in Him. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have done everything to save our souls and that we have just trusted in what you've done, in your that you died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And we thank you for the spiritual insight that you've given us, and we ask that you continue to give us more illumination and enlightenment to your word today, and that you would um, bless this little Bible study and help it to edify many in the body of Christ, and maybe even to save some souls. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so um, this little two here is an example of, you know, how we're supposed to let Jesus Christ flow through us. Each individual member in the body of Christ is to be a channel of blessing with Jesus Christ's life in and through us. So, you know, what sometimes happens, though, is that we get clogged. And you can see that, you know, we have a little... Pr Houston, we have a little problem here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a clog in our hose. So we're going to talk about how to unclog um, our channel of blessing um, in this study and how to unkink. Sometimes we get kinked, see? We get kinked up. And we're going to talk about how to unkink our uh, channel of blessings that we're supposed to be with Jesus Christ in and through us um, working. Now it's working. Now it's a clear channel for him. <laughs> and so um, let's uh, begin uh, with First Thessalonians chapter 3, a model brother. Um, verses 1 through 5, why Paul sent Timothy. Um, 6 through 8, Timothy's good report. Um, 9 through 13, prayer, um, Paul's prayer for them. The um, Thessalonians were a model church because they had a model minister. Today, we will learn about the model brother, most of all, we will learn that believers are to be a channel or a vessel of blessing to others. We are to let Christ live through us. But unless we understand the Bible by rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15, we will not be, a use, be useful sons and daughters, a channel of blessing to others. Sometimes, the hose that we saw will get clogged or kinked um, by our sinful flesh or lack of knowledge. Today we will learn how to unkink and unclog. So um, let's move on. Um, our review sentences. Chapter 1, we had the model church. In chapter 2, the model minister. And um, <laughs> don't worry if it's, uh, yeah. And then in chapter 3, our model brother. There you go, just um, move it over uh, with the handle. Yeah. So, um, that's good. In Thessalonians, there's five s chapters. It's laid out with a beautiful simplicity, the whole book, very pleasing, and um, each chapter ends with something about the rapture, and so, but each time it ends with something about the rapture, it talks about a different aspect of the rapture, so in chapter one, it was our salvation and deliverance from the wrath, before the wrath, the tribulation. In chapter 2, it was our reward at the judgment seat of Christ. 
the rapture in relationship to our reward. And in chapter 3, which we're in today, it's um, our presentation, the presentation of, um, by Christ um, of the body of Christ to the Father. So, um, we're going to talk about how the day of Christ encompasses three events. The rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, and Christ presenting the church to the Father. Um, at the end of our message today, we're going to talk about the mystery of godliness and explain that. And um, MarianneManley.com is my website where you can get a lot of information. Um, we had explained last week that the kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven and earth. And both of these groups or realms are in Christ. So let's get that on. Let me just um, say something about salvation because I was just listening to a wonderful message by Pastor Barnhouse and he did a great job explaining the gospel according to what, you know, Paul. But he left out the part about imputed righteousness. And so I just want to make sure that we all know this piece. Because when we put our sins on Jesus Christ, He gives us His righteousness to our account. And because we have His righteousness, that's how God can then declare us um, to be um, righteous. Because we have His righteousness. And no one can enter heaven without the righteousness of Jesus Christ on us. So I'm very happy that um, we have many friends here, and I just want to share now a little bit about what Pastor Tom Bruchet has said about the importance of rightly dividing. So why rightly div right division is really important. You will never understand your Bible. You may have believed the wrong gospel. You will not understand what God is doing today. You will not be a good ambassador for Jesus Christ. You may be sharing the wrong message to the world. You will not know how the Holy Spirit is working through His Word. You may be following doctrine that is not meant for you, which makes that doctrine false. You will not know God's plan and purpose for mankind. You will not understand how the life of Christ is manifest in your mortal flesh. You may not be fit for the Master's use and prepared for every good work, as it says in 2 Timothy 2.21. When it's all over, you will be ashamed and not a workman for God. You will be unapproved unto God, not rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. You need to know right division so that you can believe it, not oppose yourself, and get out of the snare of the devil, and believe the truth, not a lie. 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26. So that was from a message on why right division is so important by Pastor Tom Bershay that he did in uh, 2017. Um, so... Let's talk a little bit, before we do the chart, we'll talk a little bit about the books. God's Secret is a book for how to rightly divide the Word of Truth using pictures. And uh, that's the basic foundational information that unlocks the Bible. Then we have Romans, a concise commentary. 1 Corinthians, a commentary. 2 Corinthians, a commentary. Galatians, a commentary. Then we have Treasure Hunt, Volume 1, which is Gal uh, Romans through Galatians, 
and oh, Lynn, could you close that window, please? Um, and it's commentary only, not um, any introductory information. We have Ephesians, a commentary. Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, a commentary. And then we have Treasure Hunt, Volume 2, which is the prison epistles, thank you, Lynn, of Paul. Uh, Paul's prison epistles, which is these two books... Um, in in one commentary only, and we just finished writing uh, some um, children's books. So we have just as God said, a, um, chil a children's book with with colored pictures. This is the full color edition um, here, and it has some lovely, um, you know, eye catching color pictures. Um, and I found out that on October 20th, Kindle Direct Publishing decided to block the Kindle version of this book because they didn't, they found the information to be offensive and didn't want it getting out to the world. So, you know, there are godless men and women that want to hinder God's work. But the good news is that I also have the book in black and white, just as God said, for under $5. And the Kindle version actually is in color on this, and it's not blocked. So I have made this one available uh, starting November 28th for $0.99 cents till December 5th. So um, you can get that then. And then we have um, why was the earth without form, void, and dark. A little booklet for $3.99. So those are available to um, edify anybody who wants them. So um, let's move over here. Um, we have Genesis through Revelation, all the books of the Bible, and um, everything that's in white over here is prophecy, then in yellow we have mystery, and then over here in the white we have prophecy. Now you'll notice that once, um, you know, the Holy Ghost came down um, after Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. Then he was here for 40 days and ascended up into heaven. Then he sent the Holy Ghost on Peter and his little flock of people in the upper room and they were empowered by the Holy Ghost to give a renewed offer of the kingdom to Israel. But um, they, in that they were not accepted. The religious leaders stoned Stephen and Israel fell. And in uh, Romans chapter 11 verses 11 and 12, Paul talks about the fall of Israel. So then um, God decided to do something that was unprophesied, and that was he saved Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul, from heaven. He appeared in the air in an unprophesied appearance. And then he began the, uh, the uh, dispensation of grace, where he's saving people uh, to become Body of Christ members. And notice how I have these little stick figures with the cross on each one. That cross represents Jesus in us. We are to be a channel of blessing, each individual, to other people in the world. Okay? Now, um, after the rapture, we go to the judgment seat of Christ. Then after the judgment seat of Christ, the third part, okay, of the day of Christ. So there's two parts here, the rapture and the judgment seat. And then the third part is when Christ, after the judgment seat of Christ, presents us to the Father. So those three events are encompassed in the day of Christ. So after we're raptured, there'll be the seven years of tribulation, then Christ will return, and he'll set up his kingdom and resurrect the, you know, um, Old Testament believers. 
and they will then be a kingdom of priests and a channel of blessing to the world. But right now, we are. Okay? So let's get going with our study. You'll join me uh, here. Uh oh, I don't have my, my paper. <laughs> By my computer. Oh, I just printed it out, Lynn. If you can get that. Just, um, yeah, I just printed it out, so it should be there. In the printer. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So, please turn to me, uh, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Okay. So the good thing about um, Paul's hindrance <coughs> to go and see the Thessalonians was that he did write this letter. Uh, that we have t today. So, um, let's have you start uh, reading for us um, Maureen ch um, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother, and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So, um, when Paul could no longer endure the suspense of how the Thessalonians were doing spiritually, um, the apostle came up, apostles, which was um, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, came up with a plan for how they were going to go around Satan's hindrance of Paul himself seeing the new saints. So, Paul sent Timotheus, a model brother, a minister of God, see how it says that he was a minister of God? And their fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish and comfort them concerning their faith. Meanwhile, Paul stayed in Athens alone. Paul knew he could trust Timothy to remind them of the doctrine Christ had given him. Timothy would be a channel of blessing to them. Timothy was saved on Paul's first apostolic journey in Acts 14, 6 and 7. Timothy was well reported that, um, of them that were in Lystra. In Acts 16, 1 through 3, Paul picked Timothy to minister with him in place of John Mark. Do you guys have a pen I could have? Uh, thanks. I'm not just part of that. So, um, Paul gave his estimation of Timothy in his letter to the Philippians. He said, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Now, where was Paul when he wrote Philippians? He, he was in you know, on house arrest in Rome, right? Oh, okay, so he that's what I thought. Yeah, he couldn't go himself. He couldn't go himself, so he had to send Timothy then also. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Um, Annie, if you want to, you can move up one row. Annie? Oh, she's not, Okay. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he has served me in the Gospels. That's Philippians 2.19-24. through 24. Timothy and Silas willingly traveled 200 miles there in the same distance back to help the Thessalonians. God is working in us, as it says in Ephesians 2.10, that we are his workmanship, to make us willing servants and channels of blessings. We are to be mature adult sons and daughters who serve God willingly, doing what pleases Him. The phrase, your faith, see how it says your faith at the very end of 2? Mm -hmm. Appears five times in this chapter, chapter 3. It's in 3, 2, 3, 5, 3, 6, 3, 7, and 3, 10. 
Paul was clearly concerned about their faith and wanted them to stand strong in it. How did Paul establish them in the faith? He sent a brother. That's 3, 1, and 2. He wrote a letter in um, verses 3 and 4. He prayed for them in 5 through 10, and then he reminded them of Christ's return in verses 11 through 13. Once a person is saved, we can do the same for them. As channels of, or vessels of blessings, I am blessed that I have several of my friends, that several of my friends have understood the mystery. There's uh, Lynn and Ruth and Patty, who's sick. There's Maureen was helped by her husband, my friend Cheryl in uh, Texas. But many more have been hard-hearted and unteachable, which just breaks your heart when they won't, you know, accept the truth. Uh, verse 3, Lynn. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Okay. Paul had personally suffered at the hands of many of those evil men who are now persecuting them. Their persecution and affliction should not move them away from Pauline truth. True believers are appointed thereunto. He just said so. In verse 3. The Galatians had been moved away from the faith that Paul had delivered to them. Paul told the Galatians, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him, the him there is Christ through Paul, that called you into the grace of Christ into unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So that's in Galatians 1, 6, and 7. The Galatians had been seduced into believing that although they were saved by faith, they must keep the law in order to live the Christian life. But we are saved by faith and should live the same way, by faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5.7 We walk the same way as we were saved, uh, by faith. We live by believing the doctrine that Christ revealed to Paul as recorded in Romans through Philemon. We believe from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, Romans 6.17. Christ's doctrine to us through Paul will work in us when we understand it. When we follow Paul's doctrine, we are not under the law. The law makes the dead sinful flesh in us come alive again. But, okay, so that's an important thing to know, you know, that the law, if we're getting legalistic because we're following Peter instead of Paul, the dead sinful flesh is going to come alive in us again. Paul said, but uh, sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly it's exceeding sinful, Romans 7, 9. The sinful flesh can clog or kink us up so the Spirit of Jesus can't flow through us. Man is naturally self-centered. How do we unclog and unkink so we can be a channel of blessing? Paul said, Sin dwelleth in me, Romans 7, 17, and 18. Although we are dead to sin, Romans 6, 2, and dead to the law, Romans 7, 4, our sinful flesh, which is in our mortal bodies, will only stay dead if we walk in the Spirit. Romans 8, 1, and Galatians 5, 16 through 18 talks about that. Um, okay, let's go there. Turn to Romans 8, 1. And then uh, Galatians 5. So in Romans 8, 1 it says, well, I'm going to read that in a minute, so I'm not going to read that right now. Um, let's go to Galatians 5, 
16 and 17. Uh, no, 16 through 18. Okay. So it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. There's a warfare. And these are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Okay, so we want to be led by the Spirit. Paul discovered that there was a law, a fact, reality, a constant rule. So this is not the law of Moses. This is a, a, a law, kind of like the law of gravity. That evil is present in me. Romans 7.21 Paul called it the body of the sins of the flesh in Colossians 2.11 There is a way to be free of this law, reality, and fact. Do you want me to open this? No, we're good. And that is to walk in the Spirit by faith. When we understand our identity in Christ, we can function correctly. We were baptized into His death, as it says in Romans 6, 3, and 4, and raised to newness of life and alive unto God, Romans 6, 11. We can have Christ's life flowing through us, His words, our spiritual life. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We're in Romans 8, 1, you guys. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Is that the new law? This is this is um, the uh, new law that's operating in our dispensation. Oh. Yeah. And this new law is that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. So this is a new constant, a new fact. This is fact. So that we can have the life of Christ Jesus in us, working through that tube. Remember, mm -hmm. we had that that little um, tube mm -hmm. that we want to have free flow. So it's when we have the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we're free from the law of sin and death. That's Romans eight one and two. Here's the crux. If you look at Romans eight three, that's where the crux is. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, our flesh was too weak to keep it, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Romans 8, 3. So, but Christ succeeded. He was able to keep the law perfectly. Christ condemned our sin nature on the cross. Sins are the wrong things we do, while sin without the S is our sin nature. Christ was made sin for us, destroying or crucifying our sin nature in His flesh on the cross, so that we could have His righteousness imputed to us, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21. For He hath made Him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of Christ in Him. The you know, righteousness of God in Him. Oops. That is so important. Isn't that important? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that, I mean, that's how we, you know, we crucify that old man. We crucify because he, Christ did it. He crucified and we identified with Him mm. on the cross in the death burial, in His death burial resurrection. Romans, it, because he, 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 he did it for us. See, he went through all that, not because he needed to, but he, because we needed him to. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, we needed him to. Okay, so Romans is about the righteousness of God, the whole book, and how God can justify a sinner and make him acceptable and righteous while he continues to sin. So are we continuing to sin right now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're continuing to sin right now, but God can declare us righteous because we have believed what Christ has done for us and received this imputed righteousness. So this is so important, you know, because if people 
don't realize if they people think that they're going to be sinless after they're saved they can get defeated yeah. and discouraged yeah. right mm -hmm. um, but remember we're going to walk in the spirit so we won't do the, the lust of the flesh so um, Christ came through the sacrificial system from, um, a, apart from the law in Romans 3 21 and 22 it talks about that let's, let's read that Go to Romans 3, 21 and 22. But now, now in the dispensation of grace, Paul has received this further advanced information. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. So, the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. He was faithful. He kept the law perfectly, right? If your Bible doesn't say the faith of Jesus Christ, get a, get a King James. <laughs> upon, unto all and upon all that believe. So, Christ has paid the sin debt when he died on the cross. But, his... Righteousness is only imputed to those who believe. That's so important to get. Okay? Um, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins and go to, you know, the bad place. The lake of uh, hell, and then hell will go into the lake of fire. So, um, this is how God solved the sin problem. Every person has sinned. Um, Lynn, can you read Romans 3.21? And... Maureen, can you look up Ecclesiastes 7.21? No, 7.20. Ecclesiastes 7.20. So Romans 3.21? Yeah. But now the righteousness... No, no, that's 22. Oh. Next. 21? I'm, I mean, 3.23. 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. Okay, so we... Is there... Is Does it say... For most of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of For God. All. All. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's all. Thanks, Lynn. I had to change that to 323 in my <laughs> notes. Where is Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiastes is uh, right after um, Proverbs. And, oh. Okay. Um, and so oh Ecclesiastes 3. Oh, before I say this. Uh, uh, yeah, before I say Um, almost there. Almost there. Okay. There's, <laughs> oh, okay. Song of Solomon. Here it is. It's just, it's, yeah. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Okay. There it is. Oh. There's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So there's another verse in the Old Testament that talks about how everybody sins. So, but we are justified freely by the faith of Christ if we believe the good news that God has said we need to believe in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. That Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. After the cross, the Father declared the Old Testament saints who had died before the cross righteous because of Christ's sacrifice. Look with me in Romans 3, 24 and 25. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, justified freely is to be declared righteous through the redemption that was... He was, a, he, he was you know, made the redemption possible, Jesus Christ whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So God knew that Christ would eventually pay the sin debt, so he didn't wipe out the Old Testament saints because they didn't have Christ's righteousness on them. 
he allowed them to stay in Abraham's bosom until Christ had paid the sin debt. And then after Christ um, died and was buried, he went to Abraham's bosom and he brought those saints up to heaven. So that's where they are now. So, um, the Father can remain just and justify believers in mystery because at salvation, the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us. As it says in Romans 3.26, um, it says, To declare, I say, who's the I? Paul. Good. At this time, what's this time? The dispensation of grace. His righteousness. That's God's righteousness? Correct. The Father's. Okay. That he might be just and the justifier of him, that's the believer, which believeth in Jesus. So the Father can justify them. And if we look over now at uh, 4 5, uh, we see that um, to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if we just believe what Jesus Christ has done, and we don't try to think that we can do something to add to what he's done, but just we trust what he's done, then our faith will be counted as righteousness. And then in uh, 4.23 it says, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So we get that imputed righteousness just like Abraham did. Now turn to uh, 5.10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Okay, so... We were reconciled while we were enemies. Now look at 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So we have received the atonement now. But Israel will not <coughs> receive the atonement until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at his second coming. Okay? So we have been atoned now in this... Um, Life. Turn to Second Corinthians five twenty one. Um, let Let's read that together. Let's see if we can harmonize. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we all there at Second Corinthians five twenty one? Uh oh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm at First Corinthians. Okay. All right. You'll lead us. <laughs> okay. We'll We'll try to do it together. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Love it. Good job, girls. Okay, so the Father loves His Son, and we're in Him. We become sons of God by having the Spirit of His Son in us. Now, with Christ's life working in and through us, we can be effective sons of God. Once we understand the mystery, we are not to be moved from the truth. Now remember, at the very end of this lesson, and this lesson should be kind of short today because it's only 13 uh, verses, we'll go over the mystery of godliness. Okay. Um, now, okay. Okay, so... <clears throat> Now, with Christ's life working in and through us, we can be effective sons of God, and once we understand the mystery, we are not to be moved from that truth. When I was a mixer, mixing Peter and Paul, I had little, I had little, if any, fruit. Paul was not moved from preaching and teaching the truth Christ gave him. Paul stayed the course. He stood fast until he was martyred. He told the Ephesian elders that he wanted to reach his kinsmen. But none of these things moved me. 
neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Acts 20, 24. So last week we said that gospel of the grace of God that we just talked about is the same as the gospel of Christ. At the end of his life, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. In this case, I believe that his appearing refers to Christ's appearing to Paul on the road to Damascus. Remember in Acts 9, the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace both began in Acts 9. While Christ's next glorious appearing will be at the rapture. So we're looking for him to appear in the, in the air with a with, you know, shout. He's going to give us a shout. We're going to go into detail about that rapture next week. So, um, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 The body of Christ and the dispensation of grace both began when Christ appeared to Paul and will end when Christ appears in the air to catch us up. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 6.14 See, the appearing of Jesus Christ is in that verse too. Until the appearing of Jesus Christ. We're going to keep, we're not going to be moved away. We're going to keep this. Christ's two appearings are like two bookends with the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace in between them. Until then, we are to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Verse 4, Maureen. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. Paul had told them when he was with them to expect trouble, suffering, and persecution, which had now come to pass. They and we are living in the present evil world. Galatians 1.4 Surrounded by godless men and women. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 Jesus had let Paul know how great things he must suffer for my name's sake in Acts 9.16. Mm -hmm. In Lystra, or Lystra, Paul had healed a man lame in his feet from his mother's womb, and this miracle caused the idol-worshipping Gentiles to want to worship Paul and Barnabas. But when the unbelieving Jews came from Antioch of Pisidia, and Iconium, they convinced these same people who wanted to worship them in one moment to want to stone Paul in the next moment. But God was not finished with Paul, and God revived him from death, as it says in Acts 14, 19 through 22. Verse 5, Lynn. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. Okay, see, there's another incident of it saying your faith. Mm -hmm. When Paul could no longer stand the suspense of how their faith was holding up in the face of strong persecution, Paul got around the tempter, which is Satan's hindrance, of him by sending brother Timothy and Silas, Remember in Acts 18.5, they both come mm -hmm. to Paul and Corinth? To find out if the tempter had tempted them away from the truth with his lies, so that all their labor to minister to them would be useless. Verse 6, uh, Maureen. 
But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. Okay, your faith is in there. Your faith yeah. and charity, right? Mm -hmm. Timothy brought good tidings, or glad tidings, or good news. They had not been tempted to depart from the truth, so they could avoid persecution. Their faith and love had endured the temptations. Their steadfastness and tender regard for Apostle um, Paul prompted Paul to write this touching and intimate letter in which he praises them for standing firm in the faith. His heart was overflowing with love and joy and pride for how the Thessalonians received the word of God and were holding up under persecution. Paul's heart was warmed and comforted when he heard that the Thessalonians wanted to see him again. He longed to see them too. It was a young church, but they believed that Christ was speaking to them through Paul. They were not deserting or departing from Paul. This was not the response Paul had from the Corinthians or the Galatians. He told the Corinthians, I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved in 2 Corinthians 12, 15. He said to the Galatians, I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Galatians 4, 11. The Thessalonians proved their faith by their charity towards others. Love is how we view others, our warm feeling towards others, while charity is how we treat people. Uh, I call it love in action. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Colossians 3.14 Charity is selfless, sacrificial benevolence towards others. The end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and a faith unfeigned. 1 Timothy 1.5 Christ through Paul loved them. A pure, genuine, true Pauline understanding of the Bible will naturally produce charity and other fruits of the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us. Galatians 5.22-23 through 23 talks about all the fruit. For the fruit of the... Uh, well, let's turn there. Galatians 5.22 of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace. Uh, patience, patience, oh, endurance. Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> uh, maybe not endurance. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Okay. So there it was. Uh, verse seven, Lynn. Therefore, brethren. We were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. There's your faith again. Mm -hmm. They were comforted that they were doing well despite their afflictions. The apostles' afflictions were worth it. And they didn't have to be distressed about their faith because it was still going strong. Their worry was alleviated because the Thessalonians were enduring their afflictions. God wants obedience without compromise. We are not to follow the path of least resistance. That is a worldly idea from the devil. We are to stand for the truth even in the midst of persecution. Jesus did not take the easy way out. He went to the cross for us. Paul suffered greatly to give us the gospel. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So he rejoiced in his sufferings because he was happy to do it. In Thessalonica, Paul had been smuggled out of Jason's house and brought to Berea. 
Later on in Ephesus, he had to leave town because the mob wanted to tear him apart in their uproar, instigated by the silver and copper uh, idol makers. The ministry Paul had built over three years in Ephesus came to an abrupt end. We are to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 3 not to take the easy way out. Uh, Maureen, verse 8. For now we live, if we stand fast in the Lord. If ye, if ye stand oh, fast okay. in the Lord. Okay, so Paul said, in effect, it would kill us if you didn't stand fast in the faith. But now we can live because you stand fast in the Lord. It gave Paul a surge of life, a giant shot in the arm to hear that the young church was standing firm in the middle of persecution. When, ye know, when we know who we are in Christ, that we are complete in Him, Colossians 2.10, then we can stand fast in the Lord. We are to have faith in what Christ preached to the body of Christ through Paul, not what Christ preached in His earthly ministry to Israel, as recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, go to Romans 15.8. This verse is totally corrupted in the New King James Version. Okay, um, Romans 15.8 says... Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, which is, who's the circumcision? Jews. Jews. Yeah, well, specifically, it's the believing Israel. remnant. Oh. Okay, it's Peter and his group. That's the circumcision. Okay. Little so it was a little flock. For the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Because, as we said last week, Jesus Christ is going to make the nation of Israel out of that little flock. Okay? So he's going to remake them from the believing remnant. So in the past, in Exodus um, 19, 5 and 6, and in the future, Isaiah 61, 6 through 8, God will use the nation of Israel as a channel of blessing to the world. Um, Maureen, can you take Exodus 19, 5 and 6? And Lynn, can you take Isaiah 61, 6 through 8? Um, God will use the nation of Israel as a channel of blessing to the world as we've talked about. Today, each individual member of the body of Christ are to be a channel of blessing to the world. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Okay. okay. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay. So once they get the new covenant, they're going to be a holy nation. Okay. And then they'll be a channel of blessing to the rest of the world. Um, go ahead, uh, Lynn. Isaiah 61, 6. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your name ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Okay, so that everlasting covenant with them is the new covenant. Okay, and so the, he, God has promised this new covenant for a long time. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, verses 9 through 11 
in um, Ephesians chapter 3, Lynn. And also, let me just mention that the Gentiles then is going to serve the, the Israel, and Israel will again be, you know, the preferred nation, and all the Gentiles will, uh, you know, be coming to them. Looking to them. Yeah. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our Lord, our God. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. So they were so relieved and overjoyed with gratitude to God for how well these believers were doing in the faith. They had thanked God in prayer so many times for them that they didn't know what else they could thank God for. <laughs> we talk to God about His people, then we talk to His people about God. They prayed night and day. The Hebrews begin the day in the evening at sunset. Uh, Paul was constantly receiving more and more progressive revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ concerning the mystery. Paul had taught them many things and may have had to leave them abruptly without having time to finish teaching them what he wanted them to know. Paul wants to perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Notice how we have your faith again. Paul longed to return and teach them more. Therefore, the apostles were praying exceedingly that the Godhead would direct their way to them. Notice how it's now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Uh, verse 12, Maureen. In, in what? Um, chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, oh, verse 12. Okay. Thank you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Good. Although their standing is perfect before God, Paul wants their state to match their standing. He prays the um, to the Lord that the Lord would make them Okay, let me put in this little that I had left out. That the Lord would make them to increase and abound in love one toward another and to all men, even as Paul and his co-workers have loved them. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13, 9 and 10. Love seeks the highest good for another their greatest welfare. Paul has been encouraged them to have faith, love, and hope. Uh, verse 13, our last verse. Go ahead, Lynn. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Okay, so notice how it, it's to the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So with all his saints. So here is that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come to the Father with all his saints and present all the saints after the judgment seat of Christ. To establish, see how it says um, establish here? To establish means to start building something solid, while establish, without the E, means to make what has been established stable. Paul says that if we understand the mystery by rightly dividing the word of truth, the doctrine will work in us to produce something of value at the judgment seat of Christ. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were some time alienated and enemies of your 
in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. That's Colossians 1, 20 through 23. So here we have again how he destroyed, um, you know, our sins in his, the body of his flesh through death and how he wants to present us holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Um, we will still be saved if we believe the gospel, but our service will be cast away, as it says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. That's cast away. It's talking about our service, not our faith, not our salvation. If we do not continue in Paul's doctrine, our, our um, work will be cast away um, for, as far as a reward is concerned. So the Lord Jesus Christ will bring the body of Christ before God the Father and will present their and our hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, as at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day of Christ in, includes the three events, the rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, and Christ's present, presentation of the body of Christ to the Father. This verse is talking about Christ presenting us to the Father, while it is also true that them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him when he comes to the rapture. That's from 1 Thessalonians 4.14. When the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, at the rapture. The judgment seat of Christ, first service, is talked about in Romans 14.10, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 17, and 2 Corinthians 5, 10. It is after the rapture. This life is the only opportunity we have to have any work that is going to count for reward there. Any blemishes or false doctrine will be burned off the believer there, as it says in 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. Let's turn there. 1 Corinthians 3, 12. Uh, I mean, uh, 3. Yeah, verse 12. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. That means quality. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet as so as by fire. Okay. Um... Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Let's just go there. Okay. So, uh, we are the temple of God, and God dwells in us. Christ dwells in us. Um, this, okay, so um, the fire of the eyes of Jesus Christ, and the fire of the Word of God. Um, Jeremiah 23, 29, and Revelation 1, 14. Which one do you want, Lynn? Um, I'll go for Jeremiah. Okay, you want to do Revelation 1, 14? Okay. And we want to look at what is that fire that's going to burn off and purify us. His uh, head and his <coughs> hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay, so it's the eyes of Jesus. See, you can see, right, you know, everything um, that's good or bad. Um, Jer you, what so was it, Jeremiah? Uh, Jeremiah 30, 23, 29. Okay. Okay. So, oh, 
we will he will burn off the wood hay and stubble the false doctrine or any work done by false motives after we are purified then Christ will present the glorious church to the Father it will be holy and without blemish as it says in Ephesians 5 27 okay you're ready is not my word like as a fire saith the Lord and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces okay so his word is like a fire so you know his word has is a living word and it's going to try we're going you know to see if how we measure up according to his word upon salvation we receive the Holy Spirit in us the life of Jesus is in us as it says in 2nd Corinthians 4 7 10 11 and Galatians 2 20 um, let's go to 2nd Corinthians 4 7 um, are you there, Lynn? You mm -hmm. want to read it? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of may be of God and not of us. Okay, so, you know, it can be, you know, we can be a channel of blessing through, in the, you know, it can be an earthen vessel too. You know, we are like an earthen vessel that, you know, with the treasure in that earthen vessel is... Um, is what we're going to find out what it is now. Can you read uh, verses 10 and 11 to Lynn? Always bearing about in the body and dying of... The, the dying. The dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Okay, so it's the life of Jesus was that treasure. Read verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Okay. So we had the dying and the life of Jesus. You know, that was our identification in verse 10. And we had the life of Jesus and um, in our mortal flesh. So that's mortal flesh. It's like the body, right? Um Okay, so um, turn to Ephesians five twenty-seven. I just want to show you with your own eyes that this is Christ's goal. Um, that he might present it, that's the uh, church, to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So he he's at work trying to accomplish that goal. Um, okay, so in Galatians 2.20, we know that... Okay, let's see if we remember it. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, so we've been practicing a little. And so we have the life of Jesus. The, uh, live it in the Christ, uh, the life, um, uh, uh, how, how do you go? The life of Christ liveth in me, right? Mm -hmm. So his life in us helps us to be sanctified as we nourish our inner man with sound doctrine. The Holy Spirit in us needs to be fed the Word of God, rightly divided. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. We can pray for God to increase our faith, but it isn't going to happen unless we increase our time in the Word of God, rightly divided. Um, in, in our Bible studying and understanding of God's Word. There is no substitute for consistent prayer life and study of God's Word. This is how Satan's power is defeated and believers become stable. A believer who is ignorant of the Bible rightly divided is prey to every wind of doctrine 
and will not be established in the Lord, as it talks about in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. A mind void of God's word will be filled with Satan's lies. Not only do we need to offer our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through, but we need to renew or reprogram our minds daily with God's word, as it says in Romans 12, 1 through 2. Um, you want to read that, uh, Maureen? Romans 12, 1, 1 and 2? Let's all turn there. These are such important verses. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, so that, that really talks about us, you know, um, offering our bodies a living sacrifice so that Christ can live through us and we renew our mind by His Word. You see, it's all in these verses. These verses are so key. So, um, the Lord Jesus Christ is very busy. He is not working physically in our lives, but spiritually. The Holy Spirit keeps us and continues His work in us until the day of Christ. The day of when He comes, we will rejoice. Um, in heaven. Turn to Philippians 1 6. Go eat popcorn. Okay, so Ephesians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, that's a day until the day of Jesus Christ. Remember, the day of Jesus Christ is the rapture the judgment seat of Christ, and the presentation to the Father. Those three things. Now, while you're here in Philippians, turn to verse 10. That ye may be a, may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and what without offense till the day of Christ. So, there it is again. Now turn to Philippians 2.16. And it says holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So not only does Christ want to be happy, but Paul wants to be happy. Okay? That he hasn't done all this for no good reason. Um, where am I? Um, okay. We're almost done. For, now, Paul will tell believers in the end of this letter that he wants the very God of peace to sanctify you, uh, sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's 5.23 of 1 Thessalonians. If we walk in the Spirit, we will be blameless, useful channels of blessings, with Christ living in and through us to others. I believe that the judgment seat of Christ, that at the judgment seat of Christ, many of us will be sad that we didn't do more for God, that we were not as rich to God as we could have been. We are to do His will, as it says in 1 Timothy 2.4, What's his will, Maureen? All men be saved and come to the knowledge of his of the truth. Good. And we are to share the gospel, which is what? First Corinthians fifteen um, three and four. Perfect. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, Ephesians three nine. So now we're gonna do what is the mystery of godliness? So please turn with me to um, 1 Timothy 3.16. And you're going to see how this totally fits with being channels of blessings. 1 Timothy 3.16. Okay. 
So um, we're going to we're going to take it apart together. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus and the Godhead is manifest in the believer. Justified in the Spirit, the life and righteousness of Jesus in the believer justifies the believer. Scene of angels. Angels are watching us, as it says in Ephesians 3.10. Preached unto the Gentiles. Jesus was preached to the Gentiles in mystery, in the mystery, right? Believed on in the world. In the world, those who believe, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, are saved. Received up into glory. After rapture, the body of Christ will be received up into glory. And that's, that's the mystery of godliness. The mystery that we have Jesus Christ in us. And that's why we have these little crosses on our uh, vessels there. Jesus died for us so he could give his life to us, so he could live his life through us. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. He is our hope. Let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Holy Father God, for... Um, your word, which is so rich, and that we have the life of Jesus in us. We pray that you would help us to um, study your word, rightly divided, so that we can be vessels um, that have um, Jesus Christ in them, a channel of blessing to other people all over the world, and to please you, God. And we thank you. Uh, for all the people who have been listening to us and um, in, uh, I thank you also for that last month was the biggest uh, month for book sales that we've ever had um, thank you for all the people buying the books in Jesus name, Amen, amen. oh wait, wait, wait um, let me say that we have homework for next week we're going to be in Through the Book of Books by Lori Verstegen pages 223 and 224. So don't forget to do your homework and next week we'll go into the details of the rapture. And then we only have one more chapter to go. So um, please keep us in your prayers. In Jesus' name. Bye for now.